guys, it's Felicia. And Rowena. So it's finally that time when the sun doesn't set at 4.30 and it's just eternal darkness like, Hello darkness, my old friend. So today we're partnering with La Roche Posay for this video to talk about what we all need to know more about, our skin and the sun. Because we recently went to their event and got to try a lot of their sunscreens and did a test on our face that basically showed us how much UV damage that we currently have. And honestly, it was really nerve wracking and it yeah. made me so anxious to see. Even though sunscreen is something we're all supposed to wear all year round, some of us don't really think of it until spring or summer rolls around because we physically see it. So we thought this would be a really good time to bring up the topic of sunscreens and also sun protection in our skincare routines. Because you might not think it, but sunscreen is the best product you will ever get for keeping and preserving our youthful skin so that it's smooth and glowy for as long as possible. So to help us all get our skin hashtag back on the track UV, in this video we're going to dive into UVA and UVB and why we need to protect our skin, how the sun prematurely ages our skin affecting collagen, share our personal skincare steps that we do on a daily basis because we have different skin types and so we have different routines. And we'll also share with you guys the sunscreens from La Roche-Posay that works best for all different skin types. And most excitingly we're going to be doing a giveaway in this video so that you guys are also being good to your skin and protecting it in all the right ways. Five of you will win a back on track UV care package with more than $200 of La Roche-Posay's new sunscreen as well as the skin track UV sensor that we're going to show you guys in a bit. It's pretty cool. <laughs> We went to the launch of the new Anthelios sunscreen line from La Roche-Posay and got to speak with their formulator. There was a dermatologist there talking mm. about sunscreen and we also got to use the Visia machine. Yeah, so this was a machine that you put your chin on the thing and it flashes and takes a photo of your face and then on the screen, maybe like 10 seconds later, it shows up two photos. One on the left showed redness on your skin if you have any. Oh yeah, yeah. So our lips were really red because our lips yeah. are red. And then for me, there was a little bit of redness on my cheeks. Mm. Maybe it was blush, but it might also be, you know, I have eczema on my body, so it might oh, show up where yeah, I was yeah. a little flushed. For you, I think it was okay. It was fine, it was mostly white. It was the brown side, and the brown, where there were darkened brown blotches, those are the areas where you would have any hyperpigmentation or even acne marks, because I asked like, is all my acne marks <laughs> gonna show up? Or freckles, or just sun damage in general. These would come up as dark brown. It shows more than your freckles actually. Yeah. So you can see my freckles on my skin. I'm like, okay, it's there, yeah. it's not that bad. But when the picture showed up, I have a lot of decent amount of sun damage. Mm. Mostly on my like cheekbones, uh -huh. my nose, like wherever it's raised or higher on my mm. face. I was pretty shocked because I wear sunscreen every day. So I was like, it shouldn't be that bad. Yeah. But it might have been from <laughs> when I was younger. And then for me, I think I had a pimple on my cheek and you should see that as well because it was like darkening on the layers. Surprised. Our hypothesis was that yours would be worse and then yeah. mine would be like decent, yeah. but then hers is actually a lot better than mine. Which is interesting because then it kind of goes back to skin color oh, and yeah. tone because of the amount of melanin, which we're also going to talk about in just a bit. <laughs> this event was quite eye-opening for the fact that the steps that we do in our skin care routine really do make an effect on the longevity of our healthy skin. And on the table, we saw this little circle that we're like, what is this? And it is turned this out- a camera? <laughs> <laughs> Is this the spy on us? It's like a teddy cam, yeah. the spy cam. It's but it really wasn't. cute. Yeah, it's actually really cute. And it turns out to be a wearable technology where it's a sensor, mm. and then if you pair it with your phone, it can measure UV rays. And it can also kind of tell you the environmental aggressors in yeah. the air, like, like pollen. Mm. And also, it's like a weather app mm -hmm. as well on your phone. So, with that, let's go back and recap sunscreen and sun damage, starting with UVB and UVA rays. There's two basic types of ultraviolet rays that reach the Earth's surface, UVB and UVA. And of course, too much exposure to UV rays cause problems on our skin. UVB rays are responsible for producing the sunburns as we know it, and in worst case scenarios includes those life-threatening dark brown or black moles that form on your skin, which is a type of skin cancer known as malignant melanoma. UVA rays also play a role in skin cancer formation 
In addition, the UVA rays penetrate more deeply into the skin and play a greater role in premature skin aging changes, including wrinkle formation or photo aging. So this is why a lot of sunscreens you'll see on the market protect you against both UVA and UVB because both have a part to play in being able to like damage multiple layers of your skin. So how does this affect our skin then? Collagen breakdown and free radicals. Quick recap of the layers of skin. The epidermis is the top outer layer and then the dermis lies underneath, which is where our sebaceous glands and sweat pores are. On our epidermis layer, there are cells that contain the pigment melanin and melanin is produced to protect the skin from the sun's ultraviolet rays, but we see this as sunspots and the browning of the skin like freckles. So over time, this doesn't just cause an overproduction of hyperpigmentation, it also kills the skin cells and reduce elastin and collagen in the dermis layer. And you're kind of speeding up how old you look. People who do not have much melanin, aka fair skin types, are even more prone to damage. <laughs> so take more measures to protect yourselves by covering up sensitive areas, wearing sunscreen, limiting your total time spent frolicking in the sun, especially between the hours of 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. when UV levels are usually at its highest. UV radiation is also one of the major creators of free radicals, and free radicals are the unstable oxygen molecules that have only one electron instead of two. Because electrons are found in pairs, the molecule must scavenge its missing electron from other molecules, causing a chain reaction that can damage cells at the molecular level. This is why we call products that help with free radicals, free radical scavengers. So free radicals not only increase the number of enzymes that break down collagen, they can actually change a cell's genetic material in a way that can lead to cancer. This is why ingredients like vitamin C and any antioxidant ingredients like green tea, CoQ10, vitamin A and E, as well as oils like grapeseed are great to use to tackle this. All right, now that we're on the same page on UVs, what they are, why it's potentially so damaging, mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about our personal experiences with sunscreen. sunscreen. We come from different places in the world, like I'm from Australia, she's from California. So we grew up with the same amount of sun exposure. But like some would say, there's like a hole in the atmosphere above Australia, so the UV <laughs> rays are like more Extra intense. Hard. Yeah, I think so. So in theory, your skin should be a lot more damaged. Damage. Yeah. <laughs> But the thing is, my skin is actually more damaged than hers because as we briefly mentioned earlier, I have very fair skin type. Mm. So naturally, I don't have as much melanin in my skin yeah. as opposed to fell. Yours is more like olive, darker. Yeah, which means like because the melanin is your skin's protective layer from helping fend off the UV rays, right? So then growing up, I kind of took that for granted. Unless I went to the beach. Yeah. That's the only time I would ever wear sunscreen. But it's not like we'd reapply. No. I don't know, as a kid, you don't think about sunscreen. It's only yeah. something that your parents made you do or your uncles and aunts are On like, before outing. you go play, yeah. Every summer, my cousins and I swim a lot, so we wouldn't mm. be swimming between the hours of 10 and 2. I know our Prime parents- time. Yeah, our parents are always like, wait until later, but we're like, no, it's so hot, we wanna go swim. Yeah. So I think it's like a culmination of the past decades yeah. for me that's showing. Also, when we're younger, it's cooler to be tan. I was just gonna it, say It wasn't that. a thing. One of the things that I realized recently is that any sort of hyperpigmentation, any sort of freckling that I get now takes so much longer to start fading. Whereas back when I was young, I would do a lot of outdoor sports, you know, swimming, basketball, whatever, but <laughs> wouldn't care at all because like it would just melt just away. <laughs> yeah. One of the things that stopped me from wearing sunscreen back in the day was that I thought it was thick it was white and it was greasy and it broke me out. So all of these things have taken me years to realize I was just uneducated <laughs> in terms of that. But we're gonna talk all about mineral and chemical sunscreens in just a bit when we like play with some products. <laughs> Two years ago, I've been religiously applying sunscreen every day. Even if I'm just gonna be indoors all day or even if it's overcasty, mm. no matter what the weather is like outside in the world, I make sure to apply sunscreen. So if you guys think that our skin has always been been this like white and glowing. No, it has not. We started from very dark tanned roots. <laughs> and a really cool thing was today, it was really overcasty in the morning while I was walking to work mm -hmm. and I was wearing the UV sensor. Yeah. And then when I got to work, I scanned it. Yeah. And then I already used up 4% of my daily alloyed Daily al UV al yeah. intake. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, actually that's another interesting point. When we were at the event, the scientist formulator, 
they were saying, people think, you know, I need my vitamin D intake, but it takes less than a minute for you to get your daily vitamin D intake. And you, by like, stepping outside. a minute, I think you get a week's worth of vitamin D. It's, yeah, within yeah. seconds. Always. So that's like a myth right there. The tracker you can actually wear anywhere on your body. And the cool thing is, because sometimes I just forget, but it sends you updates. Yeah. Um, and Hello, you can... scan yeah. me now. But also in New York City, I think it's very high in this NO2 chemical in the air. So you can also tell depending on wherever location you are. So that's really cool. And this is all in the app. Yeah, this is all in the app. So those are our skincare habits and how over the years we've changed certain habits so that it's like for the better and we are now preventative and we're on the right track. And so we thought it'd be interesting to ask you guys as well and like, you know, discuss how you guys also incorporate it into your skincare routine. So now, products! Let's go into the two different types of sunscreens that we'll find and which one they work better for in terms of skin type because we both have our preferences as well. So there's mineral and chemical sunscreen. Let's first talk about mineral. There are only two mineral sunscreen ingredients, titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. They both work by absorbing into the very surface layers of skin and deflecting or scattering the sun's harmful rays. For some of you with tanner complexions like myself, this can leave a more apparent film on the skin, you know, compared to the chemical types. You'll just find that you need to work it in or blend it a little bit longer so that it doesn't leave that kind of ashy look. But now, I think especially with the products that we're going to show you, it's so thin that you don't experience that white film because yeah. the white film stays only when it's really thick. So the thing is, it really also depends on the brand and the type of products yeah. and the formulation of the product. Historically, for me, mineral sunscreens I don't really like because mm. it does make me pale. Uh, yeah, and yeah, then yeah. even like no matter how hard I work it in, it's still it's like, still, hello! You see it. Then on the flip side, there's also chemical sunscreen where they work by converting the UV rays into heat and then kind of deactivating them. But don't worry, you won't feel anything. It's just kind of like hot. You know when you've been in the sun and you feel like your skin's hot? It's actually when you're wearing these chemical sunscreens, it's because it's this conversion happening. And common sunscreen ingredients include homosalate and octocrylene and also avobenzone. Because of these ingredients, this is why it's called a chemical sunscreen. Chemical sunscreens generally come in thinner consistencies and tend to be preferred for water resistant formulas because they don't turn milky looking when you sweat or get wet. And they were talking about like for the longest time, people thought these were really harmful ingredients. Once again, that's all a myth. It's not going to harm your skin. So the main difference between mineral and chemical sunscreen is that mineral sits on top of your skin and then deflects mm. and then chemical sunscreen and, and helps. Yeah. We actually found, or I personally thought it was so exciting because these two are both so thin. So thin. Oh my goodness. It's like almost a water sunscreen where you don't feel anything, yeah. right? So there's two versions. This is the Anthelio 60 SPF, ultra light sunscreen fluid. I like the tinted mineral one. I've been using the chemical one. This is the chemical, this is the mineral. Let's rub them in. You can just see from like the just first that. couple of the mineral and then the chemical. Yeah, but when you start like keep going in, you'll find that it's so thin and so fast absorbing. Like dude, I don't even know about any of my skincare products that are this thin, let alone sunscreens. What in the world? So I was so like blown away. Shook. And with the universal tint one, I find that if you have good skin, generally, and you kind of don't want to wear a BB cream or you don't want to wear any makeup, but you still need um, sun protection, it's a really great product to use on a daily basis because it feels like nothing. So for those of you who are darker, who are more tanner, and if you don't, like you really detest that kind of film, then I would say go for the chemical sunscreen because it's just invisible. The formulators of this specific sunscreen, they actually declined multiple, multiple samples because it wasn't fluid enough. It, the texture wasn't nice enough. They like care a lot about sticky. aesthetics. Yeah. Yeah, like how and it applies, feel. how it feels. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This is the lightest product I've ever used. So this is the slightly tinted one, but when you kind of rub it in, 
It just blends into your Whoa. skin. This is actually my first time using this one. Oh, really? I've just been using the chemical and the serum. When I was there, I went straight to this one because I'm like, tinted, yes. It works That's for nice. your skin, but it also works for my skin. Oh. Yeah, it's like this chameleon. These are our second kind of yeah. favorites, right? So yours is the Daily Antioxidant Serum with Sunscreen. So a huge part of what La Roche-Posay wanted to do with these daily wear products, which just comes in the blue, mm. is that they want to kind of get you in the habit of using it. Like you just use it after your toner and it has sunscreen in it. So if you do wear a moisturizer that also has sunscreen, it's like even more protection. And this again is like water. <laughs> it's so lightweight. It feels like nothing is on there. So for you oily skin girls, this is going to blow your mind like it blew mine because this is the Anthelios Clear Skin Oil Free Dry touch sunscreen. When we first put it, it's like, it really is dry touch. Yeah. So when you put it on, it dries completely matte. Holy moly. It's dry touch, but it's not drying. No. Like it's not dry. So in the ingredients, it's got silica as well as perlite, which is known for its anti-shine properties. And it really just absorbs all the kind of like oils or whatever is on your face that's causing you to reflect. So if you're oily, definitely this is going to be like one of your favorite products ever. What I love about like the products is that they're all designed for sensitive skin and they also have La Roche-Posay's thermal water. And water is really important because if you think about it, we need water to live. If we don't have water, we don't survive but there's also different types of water you know how you buy like the little ph strips if you go and test the different bottled waters in the store they actually all have a different ph and where they lie on the ph scale actually really affects your skin so the thermal water in la roche posay is really beneficial for each of our skin especially for sensitive so there's one question so most of the sunscreens we talked about are spf 50 or 60. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between something that's 15, 15. versus oh. 50 versus 100? Yeah, so like we asked the formulator, the research says that between 50 and 100, there's actually very little difference in what it actually protects against. So he just said, yes, there is very little difference and some people just feel safer in that it's like the bigger the number, the more protection, but it's actually more about how well it spreads and covers every inch of your skin rather than the higher the number the better mm -hmm. because like certain ingredients like the zinc he was saying actually helps to spread over and cover all patches of your skin because if there are areas that are uncovered that's obviously where it will burn so don't necessarily think that if you get a spf 50 it's not doing enough compared to like an spf so by now you know the importance of sun care, of what UV rays do for our skin. Mm -hmm. We want to share the love and we're actually doing a giveaway for five of you guys. What you want to do is make sure you're following La Roche Perse USA's YouTube channel and then tell us in the comments how you're staying safe in the sun. Like what are you guys doing to change up your skincare routine or incorporate sunscreen into your routine? Or maybe you're just wearing like arm warmers in yeah. the summer. Or like... maybe you're already doing a really good job of taking care of your skin. You can also share your tips for how you were able yeah. to do that and what inspired you to do that. Maybe you wear a mum visor all the time. <laughs> That's kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, that's. I actually want to start doing that, like full that's on cool. armor if I'm driving in LA. Yeah. So, what you'll win is over $200 worth of sunscreen, including the ultra light sunscreen fluid that we both love, as well as four other sunscreens. And the My Skin Track UV pin that you can put on your clothes and wear every day so you can kind of track your performance and how much UV rays you're actually getting on a day-to-day -day basis. So just make sure you've taken notes on why it's so important to keep our skin nice and protected with sunscreen. So my question now is how does one reverse the damage? We actually have a lot of those steps already covered like retinols and vitamin A also helps to speed up skin regeneration and cell renewal. So that's one way and We've covered all the skincare steps up until sunscreen actually yeah. and beyond. So make sure you check those videos out. But until then, we'll see you in the next one.